If you are a solo travel photographer or videographer, then this video is for you. Today I will be sharing with you guys my best tips and photo life hacks that will change your travel game. We all know how hard it is when you want that perfect shot and you don't have someone there to take it for you. So if you want to take your photos from something like this to a little something like this, then keep on watching because I'm about to drop some knowledge that's going to change your life. Let's go! Also, disclaimer, you do not need a DSLR camera to take your own travel pictures. Actually, it's so much easier with iPhone. Are you ready to learn some new camera tips? If you have a tripod, bring it. If you don't, no worries. There are ways around it, but it does make your life a lot easier. I have two. One of them is very difficult to travel with, and one of them is very easy to travel with, so I will show you both of those. First one I have is kind of your normal size tripod. It's great for a lot of shots, but can be very difficult to travel with. So my advice to you would be get a monopod. Hi guys from the editing room, um, aka my bedroom. That is definitely not called a monopod. It is called a gorilla pod. I don't know where that came from. The amount of times I say monopod too. It is a gorilla pod. I'll have it linked down below if you want to check it out on Amazon. All right, back to the video. <laughs> but get one of these. They are amazing. They're super compact, super easy to travel with, and a complete game changer. Film yourself posing. I know it's cringy and I know it sounds weird, but trust me, it is so helpful. It seems cringy now, but when you are in public, it is going to be so much better to just get that one shot and not have to pose for like 10 hours hours because you don't know what angle you like. You could practice posing in front of the mirror or in front of the camera. I've done both. It is so awkward each time, but seriously, it does pay off. Sometimes we do look different in the mirror than we do on camera, so I would definitely recommend taking a video of yourself and watching it back. Trust me on this one, it helps a lot. Also, shout out to Zoe Akiko. I found this tip from her. She's fantastic. Literally, she is so photogenic. Thank you, Zoe. Always, always, always research the place that you are visiting, whether that be the city or the countryside, wherever you are going, do your research. Obviously, we're gonna be doing a lot of research if we are the ones planning this trip, but what I mean by this is go on Instagram, click on the hashtags for that specific city, look at some of the pictures that other people have taken and start planning your shots and your location. It will save you so much time and I cannot even tell you how many times I've gone to a city, taken pictures, left, and then saw other people post and I was like, oh, I wish I got that shot. So definitely research where you're going and plan your shots. Check the weather and know when the best time is to shoot. Evenings and mornings are always best if you want to avoid that harsh light on your skin unless you are going for that look. If you're filming in the water, usually midday is best because it makes the blues really, really blue. But other than that, it's best to avoid harsh light. I currently am filming at 3.40 p.m., which here in the United States at the moment is pretty much midday and can be tricky. But if you find a good slice of shade, then you are all set. Currently, I'm under the tree and it is even lighting. Pro tip, if you are standing in the sun, put out your fist and see there are no shadows on my knuckles right now. That is good lighting. What if I told you for all of you camera users, there is an app that you can connect your camera to and use your phone as a viewfinder. I don't know how I have survived so long without this app. I had just found it quite recently and it is a freaking game changer, okay? This app is called Image Edge. I'm currently talking to you guys on my camera, but I can see myself in my phone. I can control the settings, I can control the aperture, the ISO, the shutter speed, everything. I can also use it as a remote to take pictures. Obviously, you don't want your phone in the shot unless you're going for that look. So what you can do is put your camera on a timer mode through the app and then put your phone in your pocket, pose, there you are, my friend. You're welcome. Another tip I have is to film before you take the picture. Whether you're taking pictures on a camera or an iPhone, click the record button and start walking wherever you want to take the picture and then take a mental note where you want to stand and what looks the best. And you might end up with a better picture than the one you had imagined because you got to see different angles. That is a great way to find the perfect spot to create your perfect picture. So those were all my tips. I really hope this video helped you guys out. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. I am also continuously learning and I love learning new things. If you guys have any tips that you want to share, leave them in the comments down below. I would love to see them and I'm sure other people would too. Also, one quick thing. If you guys use any of these tips and take pictures and put them on Instagram, tag me. I would love to see what you guys are posting. Do it. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I love you all so much and I will see you guys next week.